Um, help me out. What was the equation that we had developed for this? Look up uh, a problem for. It was y equals? What was it? 178 is the page I'm on. Oh, it was what? Right, but I had an equation I developed. No, it was y equals mx plus b, but we had plus 35. But I don't know what, I don't remember what this part was. Well, you should have it written down. <laughs> we, we made the equation. 19 over 10, that's what I was looking for. All right, thank you. So this was the equation that we would have developed to go into the problem, right? Okay. So, so things that we have to remember, the x value are our days and the y value is our snow, snow depth, okay? So it says use the equation that we developed yesterday to find the snowpack on Wyoming Peak 25 days into winter. So where am I going to plug that 25 in? Am I going to plug it in for X or Y? Look what I have labeled. Days, so it's X. All right, so so I'm going to do the I'm going to do the math. I'm going to use a calculator to uh, help me out on this because we can use calculators in here. And if I did this math, I have 82.5 inches of snow, 25 days later. Okay, yeah, it's a good amount of snow, that is for sure. Yeah, baby. Well, during the across the span of 25 days, so I don't know. Cool. Questions about that? Questions about that? All right. So let's go to the next problem. So again, we had y equals 19 over 10x plus 35. Yes? Okay. They want to know. How many days into winter? So we're finding days. Would we have 100 inches? So remember, this is the days. This is the snow depth. Snow in inches. So where am I going to plug that 100 in? Into Y. Very good. Couldn't you also solve it using the data from the last problem? We don't have... So what this is called, because I don't believe on our thing. Oh, we this is this is called interpolation because my my data that I have for my table, I have 92 inches and I have 112 inches. So somewhere between the 30th and the 40th day, we should have 100 inches. But we're not quite sure which day exactly. So we're using this to predict what could happen. So I could do this. And so that's what, 65 equals 19 over 10x. And then I guess what we could do, we, we could have multiplied both sides by 10. So that cancels. So 650 equals 19x. And then how do I solve for x? What's the last step? Good job. Divide both sides by 19. And again, you can use the calculator, 650 divided by 19. So... 34.2 days, so a little bit more than 34 days into that winter time, we are going to have ourselves 100 inches of snow as far as what our model shows. But again, it's we're using it as a prediction. Predictions can be wrong. Okay? So... Hey, have you ever heard of like point spreads on uh, like football games? <laughs> like the Broncos are who do the Broncos play this week? No 
know that it was on. Yeah. I, I can check, but like. So, because your phone's still on you? No, that's just my wallet. <laughs> so, uh, do you guys know that point spreads are made just for gambling purposes and that point spreads change by the sports books because they want to have 50% of the people betting one way and 50% of the people betting the other way. That way they will win half their bets because they pay back 95% on what your bet would have been. So every time, so they do that, they earn 5%. If they can get truly, if you had 10,000 people betting on a certain game, if 500 bet one way and 500 bet the other way, and let's say the bets totaled $100,000 in bets, they get 5% just for allowing it. So yeah, they're paying out some people, paying out half people, the other people gave up their bet. So they make 5% every time somebody bets. And I think about that. That's kind of cool. All right, let's go to this uh, next problem. I believe this is on page 179, problem B. <clears throat> so let's make sure we understand what the problem is saying. So I worked all summer to save money for my first semester of college. So it's not to save, it's not to pay for the college, it's just so you have extra walking around money. I, then I spent a little, little of it each week. These are the records I kept. So two weeks into college, they had $1,750 in their account. Four weeks into college, they now have $1,600. So it looks like they spent $150 between those two weeks. Okay. After six weeks, they were down to $1,450. Eight weeks, they had $1,250. After 10 weeks, $950. After 12 weeks, they're down to $700. So they're spending a little bit of money. Agree? Now, we don't know if they're spending all of it at once between those weeks or they're just gradually getting their, you know, $8 Starbucks. I don't know. We don't know. All right. So, my friends, um, the independent variable would be the X values. So what would be the X value? Um, weeks, yes. And then what's the dependent variable, our Y value? Yeah, we have some sort of money in some sort of account savings. Also, too, just like a short little like um, trick I always remember is whenever you have, so remember at the beginning of the year we had like that input and output, X and Y. You know, X is on the right side, Y is on the left side if you have like a horizontal column. Well, a vertical. Since this is horizontal, your X, will, your X values will always be on the top. And your Y values will always be on the bottom. We will not switch it. So keep that in mind when it comes to the test. If you need a label, X is the top, Y is the bottom, you will always be correct. Okay, so you see the correlation between the two? Does that make sense? So that's always a guarantee. Definitely. Unfortunately, there are some classes, they will put them out of order and ask you independent, dependent. Why? Why are they? I, I don't know. They're big, big jerks. All right. So, my friends, we want to start at zero. So, if we take a look at this, we want to start time and weeks. Well, we have basically 20 grids in the X and Y direction. So, would it make sense to count by ones if we have 20 across? No. We can have. So, should I count by tens? Zero, ten, twenty. So all of my data fits in between these two points. Not, not for the weeks. Okay, this this goes all the way out to twenty. Yeah. So you guys can count by twos, and you guys won't get it. You won't be marked down. But when we give you a graph, we want you guys to use it all the way. I know sometimes that can be a little bit of annoying, but that's just a good habit to have. And so with this in mind, we have a little bit more weeks than we necessarily have, need to, <laughs> but then that gives us kind of a good indication of how many weeks we can look into. Okay. 
So do we feel good about how the weeks went? So the Y value is our money. Okay? So the biggest number we have in money is 1750 and the smallest number is 700, but I want it to get all the way to zero because I'm starting from zero. So what do you think I should count in the Y direction by? Should I count by ones? No. Twos would get me to 40. Uh, Threes, it's going to get me to 60. Fours is going to get me to 80. Fives is going to get me to 100. 300 would go, everything would be squished way down. I bet you 100 would be good. Watch this. Ready? Yeah. Which is, so it's still, we'd be able to see our data really well. You know, it's not like scrunched down. If it's harder to, in Marco's, that's kind of why, because we know it's scrunched, it's hard to see. We need to spread out, it's a little easier to understand. I don't understand. Like, if the, if the numbers are, are bigger and they're all squished down, it's harder to read. Oh, I guess we only go 17 in this direction. 18 is all the way to the very, very tippy top. All right, so our data is enough to show on there. So we have two 1750. So that's about here. We have four 1600, which is here. So what does the slope look like it's going to be right now? Is it going to be positive or negative? So what's our correlation, positive or negative? Negative. And then six 1450. 8, 1250. Well, it's because the money is going down. Right. We're, we're losing money, right? That's a good thing to see. 950 is like down here. And then 12 is at 700. So this definitely shows that we are spending our money. We are taking money out of our account to spend on whatever we want. Agree? So there's definitely a negative slope to this line, and I'm going to put my line to best fit in there. So maybe. Should you connect the dots? No. Well, that's not that's the, that's like a curved line. So like the difference between these is So our line of best fit, yeah, because if you have only two points, you have an exact line. That's the definition of a straight line. There's exactly one line that goes through two different points. Um, but this, we have six pieces of data. So we have to try and get a line that matches up best. So question for you. Looking at our data at the very top, does our data tell us the y-intercept as it sits? Just our data. No. Because I don't have zero on the top anywhere, right? And don't say, yeah, there's a zero attached to the one. I, I understand. That's 10 is not zero. Okay? So we definitely have this equation. So now we have to think about what two points might we pick that are going to work nicely. And so I'd say maybe that's an okay point. Well, what we want to do is we want to create a line. So, kind of a basic rule for doing a line of best fit. You want to find two points that are as close to your line as possible and also as far apart as possible. So, I didn't choose the very last point because that was a little bit below our line. I chose the fifth point because it was right on the line. And then, as I went up, my line of best fit kind of got close to that very first data point. But those are pretty far apart pretty far apart okay so I have I have the this point and I have this point does that seem okay so now we want to create our line of best fit first thing we want to do is we want the slope
and I'm going to label this X1, Y1, X2, and Y2. Do you agree? I'm going to plug my values in. So I get uh, 950, subtract 1750. Okay, that's going to give me a negative number, agree? Mm -hmm. And then I get uh, 10 minus 2, and that's going to give me a positive number. So I'm going to get negative on top. And, you know, I have a calculator, so I'm going to use a calculator because we're allowed to use them. Why are we having the test before finals? Because well, we we'd have break after final, so I can't give you the test after the final. Oh. All right, can I reduce 800 over 8? Yes. Yeah, I think it'd be nicer to make it negative 100, which technically is negative 100 over 1 as a slope. Okay, so we're going to kind of utilize the slope in two different ways. I'm going to probably use the negative 100 to use to make my line of best fit, my equation. And then when it asks me about the slope and the context, I'm going to use negative 100 over 1. Okay? So um, I can't use y equals mx plus b at this point because of what reason? I don't have a y-intercept. So y equals mx plus b, this won't work because I don't know b. Okay, I don't have zero comma something. So if I can't use that, then I could probably use point slope and solve this. And I called this x1 and y1, so that's what I'm going to use. So remember when we plug it in, you have opposite values. Slope, I'm going to use this slope because I don't want to deal with a fraction, even though it's a fraction over 1. And so far, I'm going to do that. Now, I want to make this look like y equals mx plus b now. So that means I need to distribute, and I have to get y by itself. So if I distribute here, well, that's kind of easy to distribute 100, or negative 100. So I get a negative 100x plus 200. And then what's the last step? Uh, you get y by itself. Y, yeah. So I'm going to add 1750 to both sides. So I'm going to get y equals negative 100x uh, plus 1950. All right, so friends, what is my y-intercept? Yeah, 1950. So the y-intercept is 0, 1950, right? All right. May I move off this slide? Okay, give me a sec. Ready? Is that all? Yeah? Huh? Cool. All right. Does your scatter plot have a positive or negative slope? What was my slope? Was it positive or negative? Negative. So what's my correlation? If the slope is negative, then this has to be negative as well. So the slope tells you if it's positive or negative. Slope's positive, correlation's positive. Slope's negative, correlation's negative. So what was the slope? We said it was negative 100, but this one I'm going to keep as a fraction. Do you remember that? All right. So this is the y value. This is the x value. And the y value was money. And the x value was what? Weeks. All right, so we want to explain the slope in the context of this problem. So we're going to talk about what it does in the y direction first, and then we're going to talk about what it does in the x direction. So I withdraw $100 each one week. Yeah, well, average and slope is the same thing. It's the exact same thing in math. It's a great connection. I love it. Yeah, well, like it's because of the other points. Uh, I was looking at it at the table. Mm -hmm. um, 
sometimes it, it like you went through like 150 and sometimes like oh you're right yeah so we're trying to figure out the average and average and slope spot on so i'm averaging 100 dollars each week that i'm spending so that's enough to get your eight dollar starbucks and maybe a egg mcmuffin why an egg mcmuffin i don't know it's good food can't eat them anymore because they got gluten but that's okay Oh, I love those. I had a yeah, baby. Do you want to make? You want to know how to make an egg McPerfect? I named the sandwich. You want to know what an egg McPerfect is? You, you got to listen up because this is good stuff. You get yourself that hash browns too. You know what I'm talking about? Them kind of round things. So you open up your sandwich, your egg McMuffin. Take your hash browns, stick it in the middle. Now it goes from an egg McMuffin to an egg McPerfect. I, na I named it. <laughs> okay. Hey, what was the y coordinate of our uh, equation? 1950. Yeah, nineteen fifty. Because remember, our line of best fit was y equals negative one hundred x plus nineteen fifty. So our y intercept. Remember, we say it as a point. Is this? Okay. Bless you. So explain the y intercept in this situation. So at week zero, meaning I haven't got to college yet. Not at school yet. I had $1,950 to spend. That's what it means in the context. So you're just telling, verbally telling us, hey, what does the context of this mean? Before I left for school, we're getting things packed up. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever's taking to college says, okay, how much is in your savings account? Oh, I got $1,950. Okay, let's get in the car and go. Okay. Now you get to college. Now you're spending about 100 bucks a week. Okay. And this is like so 1990s. A hundred bucks a week is not a lot. Back in the 1990s, it was good walking around money. These days, you've seen the price at Starbucks. Yeah. It's getting cray cray. See, my budget for groceries is like $200. Oh, okay. All right. Where do you go, Whole Foods? All right. So remember, Whole Foods is called Whole Paycheck. All right, so remember this. This is weeks, and this is money, right? So use your equation to estimate how much money you will have after 14 weeks. So friends, what should I do with this 14? Plug it in where? Plug it in where? Oh, X. X, we label X weeks, and this says it's saying, hey, in weeks. All right, so I have negative 100 times 14 plus 1950. Remember, this is where X used to live, right? So I have negative 1400 plus 1950. And then we just do the subtraction. What is that? Uh, $550? So after 14 weeks, okay. you have $950. No, because it's being added to it. So I added a positive and a negative together. Yeah, yeah, but, but if your total is 1950, like over the span of 14 weeks. Yeah, you still have 950 bucks left. If you're spending 100 bucks a week, you still have nine weeks plus a few days. If you're averaging, if you're averaging, people are running. Go catch them, Stone. Yell at them, make them cry. All right. Hey, do you understand that? Now, notice things that I'm labeling consistently through. I have my 
line of best fit. And then as a reminder, because I can't remember, I real I look back at myself going, oh yeah, the X value are my weeks, the Y value is my money. Okay? That way it helps us figure out where to plug that in. Okay? So again, I'm gonna put my line of best fit. And X was what? X was what? Weeks. Weeks. Y was what? Money. Okay. Use my equation to estimate how many weeks it will take me to have less than one hundred dollars. So where should I plug that one hundred in? Is that weeks or is that uh, money? It's money. So I'm going to plug it in for Y. So we've de this was like second week of school, right? Solve it. Solve it. Subtract 1950 from both sides. So those cancel. That gives me negative 1850 equals negative 100x. Divide each side by negative 100. Hey, negative divided by negative this week is going to be a positive. positive. So if I cancel here. I get positive, that gives me 18.5. So, at, yeah, at 18 and point, point 0.5 weeks, so a little bit more than 18 weeks, not quite 19 weeks, I have less than 100 bucks. It's a good thing that uh, college semesters are only 16 weeks. It means your last week you get to spend the rest. Huh. What do you think? Was this hard? No. Okay. We still have some time. Yes? Yeah. I got to the end of the notes, I believe. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, before I do that, I wanted to show you. So I'm going to show you a valuable tool that works. Okay, no, you cannot use this on the test. But for those of you when you become a senior who say, you know, I had that stirrup guy my freshman year, my sophomore year, my junior year, my senior year, I want that stirrup guy again. So we're going to log on to something called Desmos. Okay, so Desmos is an unbelievable tool because once you learn the skill of what it's to do, then it's going to allow us to think further about what our data is telling us. So I'm going to use the exact same data that we just did. Okay? And no, you're not expected to know how to do this. So I'm going to plug in my weeks. I got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I got my weeks in. And then I have 1750 here. I have 1600 here. I have 1450 down here. I have 1250 here, 950, and what? 700? 700? All right. All right. And then you hit the little plus thing, and it'll take you to your line of best fit. Hey, does that kind of look like our data that we've drawn? Pretty, I mean, versus digital versus handwritten, it's kind of sort of close. A resemblance. I like it. So then when you start understanding how Desmos works, notice I have it is labeled as X1 and Y1 for my X and my Y. That's just a label. So we're going to say Y1 and how we're going to use Y equals MX plus B. But in order for Desmos to tell us what the equation is, we have to use tilde. Okay. Now, this is some vital stuff up here. That's our line of best fit. That looks kind of similar to what we had drawn. So, what was the equation that we originally had? We had a negative 100x, right? Well, Desmo says it's negative 105.7. Okay, we're close. Spend 100 versus 105, that's pretty close. And then our y intercept was $2,023.33. So, what that means is we picked this point here and this point here to make our line of best fit. You see that we have a little bit of error on this point here? Like this dot right here is a little bit below 
the uh, black line. Do you agree? And then this point is touching the line, but it's not exactly on the line. So that's called a residual value. Don't worry, you don't have to know about that. But a residual is that we had a certain amount of error that took place when we did it by hand. Desmos uses, in order to make a line the best fit, called the sum of squares equation, which is a lot of work. But Desmos does it quickly. Um, so you remember, remember we talked about R? We had the correlation. Correlation. Correlation is R. Remember we said we have a negative correlation on our uh, on our graph because my slope's negative. Well, actually, the true R value is negative 0 0.9899. 0 0.9899. That's like getting a 99% on a test. Would you be pretty, pretty happy if you pulled a 99% on a test? No. 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 I want a 54. I'll take the blue one. 99% on this is pretty awesome, yeah? I mean, I get happy when I get like a 93% on this, but that's what I try for on HGTS, but I usually want it a little like 81. Um, so that R value tells a lot. Now, the reason I'm showing you Desmos is I use Desmos exclusively in my statistics class. And why do we use Desmos versus the graphing calculator? What can I guarantee each and every one of you? What can I guarantee each and every one of you will have with you when you leave your home? Your phones. So you load Desmos on your phone because I'm pretty much guaranteed that every kid's going to have their phone. It might not be charged all the way, but you're going to have your phone. The reason I don't use the graphing calculator is raise your hand if you have a calculator that's not on your phone with you right now. Oh, okay. Almost. Now, raise your hand if you have a phone here at school somewhere in this classroom. Ah, interesting how there's more phones. Why? Why would I? Why in the world would I use Desmos? It's a really powerful tool. This graphing utility is free versus the graphing calculator can run you up to $130. <coughs> Desmos graphs much nicer and it's a very valuable tool. <coughs> now, remember I said the word residuals? We could do a residual graph too. Don't worry, you don't have to know this. If I want to plot the residuals, see those residual dots? They're above and below the x-axis. That tells you each one of those data points. That's how far above or below our line of best fit we are. Okay? And that's how they come up with the R value being negative 0.9899. Actually, how they actually do it in order to get the R value is they find the R squared value. And then you take the square root of R squared to get R. And so you take the square root of 0.9799 to get 0.9899. Okay? So it works. It's a really valuable tool. It's a great tool to tool to utilize. Um, you know, is our line of best fit? Negative 105. We had negative 100. Okay, we're close. We have human error, but the digital stuff is going to do some of the harder work first. Okay, what is my line of or my y-intercept? Two thousand. $23.33. What did we come up with? $19.50. I would prefer $22.00 versus $19.50 any day. Okay? So, my friends, your assignment for tomorrow, to get done for tomorrow, is page 181 only. Page 181 only. That's all I want you to do. Okay? And the nice thing is we got about seven minutes left. So you can get ahead on it.